Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I stopped using update sets and now just use source control. In fact, I use GitHub. Um, I'm not sure if mine's exactly the right way to do it. I'm just going to show you what I do for my day to day to uh, make sure my updates or my changes are kind of uh, containerized and I can move them between instances. Um, at my job, I have several instances I have access to. I have my PDI and sometimes I want to do something dangerous in my PDI to make sure it works and then maybe move it into work. For a demo or something else like that and um, we used to do that using update sets but I stopped doing that and now I just use github so let's get to it let's show you what's going on first thing I'm gonna do is create a repository over in github so um, you don't have to use github you can use your repository your uh, code storage of choice I'm just gonna do github because that's what I've been using um, and I'm just gonna give it a name we'll just call this awesome app and, um, and that, apparently that's available yeah so awesome app is going to be the name of my app and it's going to have a dash in it right here and this is going to be important when I actually set up my um, my, my application and service now I don't want this to be public I want it to be private but if you are wanting to share something on the community forum or with your colleagues or um, maybe a colleague across the you know country or something like that you can definitely make them public I think with the github free license you're limited to the amount of public ones I'm gonna make mine private and that's pretty much it I'm just gonna create the repo and I'm done and we called it awesome app so let's hop over to service now in service now uh, we have our application picker at the top you can navigate over to the list view of the applications and create your app from there I like to do it this way just to get started really fast because I don't need to go into studio for everything I need we're gonna go into studio to set up source control but um, this is where I usually start and I wanted to keep it authentic um, I'm gonna start from scratch and so just hit create there and we're gonna give the app a name I call it awesome app uh, so we can do the same here and uh, we'll just uh, I'm actually gonna put um, capital letters on this just for the demo so we'll call this awesome app like this and uh, I'm gonna leave the scope alone we'll create that and then uh, click OK that's gonna create the app in service now um, I could click edit it's gonna take me into studio which is where I want to be because I want to set up source control um, so this is something we can do here um, if you look in the upper left I've got a tab for source control um, the other indicator for source control is down on the bottom right um, you can see we are not connected to source control right now. If I hover over that, um, not linked to source control. So those are two indicator, or one indicator, plus this is where we're going to set it up in the upper left. So we'll go ahead and link that to source control. And I'm just going to type in um, github.com slash uh, my, my, my account. Um, I'll probably blur that out in post. And then that was called awesome app is what we named it. Now the credential, you've got to create the credential in service now. So it has to be there to select. And um, the branch, I usually just leave this as master. Now this is where I say I might be into weird territory and not following um, the instructions. I just wanted to show you what I do. Um, so they say using the default naming convention is strongly encouraged. What I want to do is I want this to be an app that I go and load in different instances. So I want it to pull from the master branch. I don't want it to create its own sub branch. Now I'll show you later on when I do make changes, I'll create a branch. Um, but that for now, that's what I do. I'll go ahead and plug in my email address here. Um, and then for the commit comments, I'm not going to um, put one in here. I'm going to actually uh, make commit comments when I change something. So this is linking it to source control. It was successful. And now I have uh, my application and service now connected to my repo in GitHub. And there's nothing in my application right now. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about when you create something in service now. It could be a workflow, it could be a catalog item, it could be a playbook, it could be a UI script, it could be a UI action, whatever it is, think about creating that in an application and stop using global, stop using uh, ServiceNow applications and pull yourself separate and up away from the out-of-the-box stuff. Yes, there's use cases for doing um, using the out-of-box apps and stuff like that and configuring and stuff like that. But when you're creating something, when you're adding something new to ServiceNow, I want you to think about first creating an app. Don't forget, worry about creating an update set, create an app. Once you've done that, you can come in here and you can create whatever you need. You, and usually it's kind of weird to do it from here, but uh, I could create a workflow directly from the studio and that will pop open Flow Designer and I can start working in Flow Designer and, and create what I need to create. So it's gonna pull up the canvas and everything and I can uh, look at what I want to. This is interesting to you, I've actually never seen before. I've never seen this uh, right-hand panel, or whatever. So let's scratch that, let's go in the regular way. I'm just gonna go into my favorites and pull up Flow Designer. Yes, Flow Designer is in my favorites. And I'm gonna create a new flow directly from here. 
And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to kind of show you the really literally the way I do it. So we'll do awesome workflow and awesome workflow here. And uh, I want to make sure that's in my new app that's going to um, be synced to GitHub. Um, so it did default to awesome app. So it seems like that's the one I have in scope right now. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And let's pretend, okay, you and I are going to pretend that I added this really cool workflow with all this different logic and actions. So we'll just add an action here as a placeholder um, as the processing uh, hurries up here. I edit this out. Okay, there we go. Um, that actually works. So we're going to create a task and we're going to do something. And I'm going to trigger off a catalog item um, so that I don't have to put in a bunch of configuration stuff like that. So there's my workflow. Save that. Um, I didn't do anything, but pretend I did something really cool and awesome, right? So if I jump back over into Studio, look, it has my awesome workflow already um, associated with the app, so that's there. Um, another thing I'll show you here is I could, um, and I do take advantage of this, for my app settings, I can control the version of my app uh, using the app settings. So I can set it to version 1.0 or 1.1, 1.2 or 2.0, stuff like that over in the app settings. So I do sometimes play around with that. Um, we'll let that load up here in a second. Oh, there it goes. We'll point out there. There's my version that I have control over there. So that just might help me keep track of what I'm doing. Now here's the magic. So I made a change in service now. I created a workflow. So I go back to source source control and I can see that I can commit or stash those changes. I'm sure stashing is great. I haven't had a use case for it yet in my day to day. I'm not working with a bunch of different developers uh, doing stuff. So my most of the time I'm just making uh, changes and I want to commit those changes. Now I showed you earlier the other indicator for source control. Look over here. You can see this app is linked to source control now um, by the little icon here that's showing that it's linked. And I'm in the master branch for that source control, which is what I wanted, right? So let's go ahead and commit the changes that I made. We're going to see those here. There's awesome workflow uh, and it's a syshub flow that's going to be synchronized up to GitHub. So I can go ahead and continue that. And that will go ahead and I can make my commit comment here. So I created an awesome workflow in Flow Designer. And now I've committed my changes um, up to GitHub. And now that's going to be there for me to bring into another instance. So let's go look at that, what that looks like in GitHub. So I'm going to go actually to um, the code here. And we'll see that we've got a created awesome workflow in Flow Designer. It's all in the master branch. Everything's good. Now I can go into another instance and uh, pull in that application. So I've got another instance up here. Let me pull this over here. This is uh, one of my work instances, but not important. What's important is I can hop over to Studio, uh, like we were doing something here. Now this instance is completely separate from my PDI, it has nothing to do with that. And I can import that application from the source control, right? So same thing that I would do if I was moving an update set, but I'm just grabbing it from the cloud instead of grabbing it from um, uh, an XML file or something like that. So we'll type in my um, repository name here. It was awesome-app, and we'll use uh, my credential. It should be in here. I hope it is. Yep, Justin's GitHub. Um, and then branch, I'm going to set as master again because I want to pull in the top level uh, code there. I don't want to you know, create a branch for this just yet. If I make changes to it, I'll actually create a branch. So let's go ahead and import that. Again, separate instance, completely different from my PDI. It's pulling it in, it's enumerating the customizations, and it's gonna just import that application. I'll have access to it in this instance. Now, while that's doing that, let's hop over back to my um, application in my PDI. Let's say that I wanted to go make changes, and I really don't wanna mess with the master branch because I wanna do something, I may throw it away, I may not. This is when I would come up here to my source control. Again, I'm speaking for Justin and what Justin does. This is when I'd actually come and create a branch. And it would be, I have a new idea for what I want to do. I'm going to create that branch. It's going to copy everything from the master branch to my new idea branch. And I'm going to go make my changes. So I can come up here to Flow Designer and I can go do something um, else. I can send an email or something like that, right? So that was my idea. I was going to send an email. Now I'm not affecting what's happening in my other instance where I'm importing that app. So I'm going to send an email here. I'm going to save it. I'm not going to put it, all the details in there, but I want to save that. So now in my PDI, I have this different version of this workflow. If we go back to uh, where we were importing that app, it actually has that app inside the instance now. Uh, let's just search for um, awesome. There is awesome app. And uh, I'll open that up. And we'll see when I open this up that I've got awesome workflow. I can pull up that workflow and we can see what it looks like. Um, we'll see that it has uh, that 
two steps, the, or not two steps, the one step. It doesn't have the send email step right now. It just has to create task. So I'm isolated from that. If I come back to my PDI uh, in my flow designer, it did save that. So let's go ahead and commit those changes. We'll commit those. Uh, there's the awesome workflow. We have modified it. I'm going to continue. I'm going to commit that new uh, send email function or send email action. I'm going to commit that. And now that is committed to my new branch, right? So I have that workflow in my PDI. If I go back to the other instance, I still have the same workflow we were looking at earlier without the new changes. Now, how do you think that I get those changes up to the, let's say I'm happy with them. I'm like, hey, let's do it. What you would do or what I've been doing is I go back to GitHub and usually it flashes up at me that there's a branch that has been had a recent push or recent commit. And I have the opportunity to pull, pull that request and merge it with the master branch. So this is where I have control over hey, do I want that thing from my PDI, which was new idea, so I got this branch over here for new idea. Do I want that committed to my master branch? For demo purposes, I do, so I'll go ahead and compare a pull. I'm gonna leave all that here, I'm gonna create the pull request. It's gonna scan it to see if it's available for automatic merge, it's gonna be fine, most of the time it has been. So I'll go ahead and merge that, we'll confirm it. And then that is now part of the master branch. So let's pull this all the way down now. Let's come back into um, the instance that doesn't have the new workflow, so we'll open that up, and uh, we'll sh we should see that it still has the um, the one step, the create task. So now, if I want that new change, I'll go to source control, and I'm going to apply remote changes because ServiceNow sees that there's some remote changes. So we'll go ahead and apply that. It's going to sync back to the master branch, and it's going to pull down that revised workflow that I changed in my PDI to this instance, and uh, we'll be able to see that when we open the workflow. There we go, we got success, we'll go ahead and close that. And now I'll open my workflow in this instance and we should see that I have the new send email step within my workflow. I was able to do that without moving XML, XML files or update sets and all that stuff. There's my new step, it's now in this instance. And that's how I'm moving things back and forth. That's how I'm working on things in the interim in order to um, kind of leave update sets behind and embrace this new source control. Now, I'm one person and I'm doing this stuff, usually it's just me. I'm not interacting with other developers, but you can see if you took this to the next level and you're working with a team of people, this could be really, really valuable and no sending files around or posting them shared drives, stuff like that. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested. Until next time, I'll see you on the next one.